Hello and welcome to Concept Hunter, the show where I scavenge the internet in search of interesting games that have interesting concepts. My name is Coker Stern and I will be your host and today we have Ludum Dare number 27. Ludum Dare is a tournament, uh, not a tournament, just a competition really, of uh, game designers where they have a central theme. This time it is 10 seconds and they put out games in a very, very uh, strict time frame. Usually it's about 48 hours, this time it is 72 hours, and there are so many games that I had a really, really tough got time actually deciding which games I want to show. I went through about uh, 15 or 20 games, and I came down to six, which is a ton. I usually show one game, maybe two, maybe three, and I have six tabs open with games. Uh, with that, I'm a bit lazy today, as um, I don't have uh, different scenes for each game, so you're just gonna enjoy the, just the general Newgrounds, how Newgrounds looks like, but we'll be fine with that. And the first thing I want to say before we, we start off with the first game is actually, please, Ludum Dare designers, listen to me. Have two different screens, one when you load up that has play, and only then start your game. The reason to do this is because I open up a lot of games, and I know other people do as well. They open up a lot of games, and if three of them start playing music, that's pretty damn annoying. That's why you need to have one screen with just play that doesn't play any music, and then your actual game. So please do that. Uh, right now at Clockwork, I have to actually refresh the page so that the game will start because I just stopped it. And uh, let's start off, right, with Clockwork Cat Press X to start. This one is really adorable. It's a tiny little concept where don't let the clock strike 12, move with the arrow keys. So we move with the arrow keys and then hold X to use your wrench. And when I do, I move the I, I move the gear and the clock goes back. It's in the background while we platform away, um, use Z or up to jump, which is really, really cute. I have to say, I can use the up key to jump as well as another key, which is lovely. It is in space and I have up key. I, 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 it's the basic thing that makes me happy because I hate using space and I love using the up key in most cases. So that's like immediate props for me. The jumping is really nice. It's very small, but it's really nice. And that's so important at, at, at platformers. It just works. You know exactly what to expect. You have full control of your character. And that's just so important that I can't even. And you have your giant wrench, which doesn't really do anything. The aesthetic is cute. It's not amazing animation or anything, but Animation, I never cared about animation, I only care about the, the mechanics themselves. And that's it, that's that's the cute little concept. You have 10 seconds to reach uh, these, tech, these checkpoints. And everything else, such as the this moving platform, is actually also controlled by that time, controlled by moving the wrench. Everything is connected to that. And that's, it's done really, really well. It also has a little bit of a, a secret, secret part over here, if I manage to drop to it where I get a, I'm a cat, so I eat a fish, and I say num, and now I can't do any, I have to wait until I lose, until I, it, it, the, the clock strikes 12, and then I have to actually, um, you know, it resets to the last checkpoint. And it does it really well. The part with the urgency, where I want to jump, but I can't quite yet, and I, I have to get it fast because the time is running out, and will I make it, will I make it? It has that. And it does it really, really well. And it's not something that we've never seen before. But it's done really well here. And I just really enjoyed it. And that's it. Obviously, later on, there's a it's a lock, so you have to find the key, which is over here. And then you have it, though it doesn't say that you got it in anywhere. You might want to have a little bit of, of just, you know, have the key pop up here so you know that you've you got the key. Even though it's pretty obvious it's... Just those little things that you want to know that you have the key. And maybe an animation instead of just the it just not there immediately. Maybe it opening up or just, you know, the little things that make a game have more production value, I'd say. Uh, one little cute thing that he does here that I, I'm not sure if I love or not is that the, the, um, the key will actually get pushed off the platform and only then fall down because I can't reach the platform because I don't jump high enough and only then do I have the key and I can move forward. So this is really cute. It's a nice little aesthetic. It's a smart concept. You can obviously build on top of this to infinity and beyond, but I just wanted to show it because I liked it and it did nothing wrong. And that's important for me. It just, it just works. It's really cute. It's called Clockwork Cat. And we're gonna scroll down and find that it is by Patrick G3. Patrick G3. 
So good job, Patrick Gugger 3. And moving straight along, we're gonna blaze through. Mr. Moore's Last Seconds. Again, this is a game that I have to reload because it doesn't have two screens. I mean, screen and then play and then start. It starts off with music immediately. Mr. Moore's Last Seconds. Let's talk about this a little bit. Have to commend it. I have to commend it for full voice work. It has full voice work. It tries to convey a story. And it tries to think about the 10 second not in a way that the, the gameplay mechanic is, is has only 10 seconds to do something, but the last seconds of a person's life. And the story here is that uh, he crashes his car, and then he reminisces about his life, pretty much. It's very short, which makes sense, it's 72 hours. The graphic is great, but there's a very big problem here that I want to talk about. So, um, first of all, remember what I said, commending the, the full voice work, amazing for a game that's You've done it at 72 hours? Are you crazy? Did full voice work? You're insane. But there's a couple of issues here with the actual platforming, the actual game. I would be fine with if this was just a pure, you know, novel or something to read or a movie. That would be nice, but it's supposed to be a game and the gaming elements are very problematic here. So let's get started. The, the voiceover will come out. I'm not sure if you can hear it that well. They had a whole life but it's it's really nice, and uh, we're not going to go through the story because we're not going to go through all of it, though it is quite short, we don't have too much time for that. And um, it moves on and on, and he's walking, I can't really move yet. And first of all, I don't know when I can move. I just, I'm, I'm not sure, I mean, right now I can't move, it doesn't actually cue, it doesn't really explain the story that well, you have to just kind of try and understand it. And here I get, I, I can actually move. The up key doesn't work to jump, I, there's only space, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Have the upkey work as well, and that's pretty much all you do. It's basics and basics of platforming. And what you do here, you have to listen to the voiceover, and you just collect the items that you need to collect. Okay, you just collect them, and then you move through the story. But there's two problems here. First of which is collision. I'm colliding into air right now. That is a big problem, and it becomes much bigger later on. It's a very, very big thing. It's such a big thing that the game designers actually recognize it and apologize in the description below. They actually say, we're sorry for the collision with the with the part there. And that's not something that should really be. Of course, you, it's a game that you made in 72 hours and with full voice work, I can't actually have... I can't ask for it to be completely polished. But that's one of the basic things. Collision is very, very important. And with collision, another thing that actually goes with it the fact that there is no distinction in the artwork, and the artwork is great here, there's no distinction between what's a platform and what isn't. The table here is exactly the same as the table here. This thing I walk through, okay? Some I walk behind and some I walk in front. And this is a platform. How the hell am I supposed to know that instead of just walking and getting stuck into things? And that should not be. I need to know the difference between artwork behind and something that I can collide and jump on, and the collision needs to be proper. So again, props to the full voice work, and the story is pretty cute. Obviously, it's a very short game, so I can't really connect to the characters, even though there's an attempt here. It can't work that well because it's so short, but basic platforming has to be there. Has to be there, guys. Very, very important. This is by Spring Missile, so good job, Spring Missile, but just work on collision and um, distinction. Collision and Distinction, those are the two things. Next we have Garden Jack, another game that I have to load. T -t 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 Firefox, come on Firefox, work with me here. Uh, okay, do I, did I have to load it? I'm not even sure. This one is freaking amazing, I love it. Sure. It's totally freaking great. And um, a game made by Guy Unger, yes, and you just move around. And you move around, I'm using the arrow keys because it didn't really tell me to use anything else. And I die after 10 seconds, and what you do is shoot the zombie, and then the door opens, and then you move past it, and then you're done with the first level. That's freaking awesome. This is just such a cool game. It's really, really well made. And then you get to this one, and I'm using the arrow keys because it makes sense for me to use the arrow keys. And then there's press space to pick up the boxes, so I can't use the arrow keys. and Because I, I can't go to space with the arrow keys. So I have to use WASD. And there wasn't really anything to tell me these things. Um, you need to tell people the WASD and space, and that's the key, because you can't... I was at the arrow keys and how am I supposed... I have two hands, I don't have three hands. So it was really uncomfortable for me at first, and I was like, maybe WASD works, and it did, so that's good. But aside from that, it was nearly unplayable. Other than that small issue, which I kinda, I really kinda hate, um, 
the picking up and placing the boxes is terrible. It's really, really terrible. Come on, make it, make it. Oh, that was so close. Picking up the boxes and placing them is terrible. Terrible. But outside of that, because it just, it, there's really very little precision and it's just not comfortable to do. But outside of that, this is so good. This game is so great. It's 10 seconds, it's short segments, it's fun, it works really well. And I would personally love to play 30 more levels. There's only 18. I would love to play 30 more levels of this game. Screw that. Procedurally generated game, um, levels. And then there's Infinity. And I would play the shit out of that game. That's just... It's just so much fun. It's just good. It's really well made. I love the little concept. We just saw that there's a little light. Um, but now we really can not see everything. And, and this level, it's just... Again, the, the placing stuff is... I'm gonna die. Placing stuff is really annoying. In this specific level, it's kind of trial and error, because if I would have gone here and I couldn't see anything, and then I gone here and I couldn't see anything, then I pretty much lost. So that's just, you know, stroke of luck, really. And once you screw it up once, you're gonna do it the next time, because there's... Come on. Just place it there. The thing is, you use the mouse to, to decide what's annoying here. You use the mouse to decide where the box falls, and use space to actually put it down so it is it'll be perfectly fine if you get really close to the box and you pick it up with the mouse I know it, it shoots and it's not the greatest thing in the world but that would work it would work better than or at least pick it up with a button and then put it down with the the because you can't you can't shoot anyways because you're aiming at that so pick it up with whatever key space I'd rather use Q and E at least but put it down with the mouse button. It makes sense, and it's just more comfortable. And that's the, the one problem that I have with this game. I would totally play this if it was procedurally generated, and I, I really love this concept. It's so good. It's well made. You have to find the zombies, kill all of them, and then you get away. And when zombies are so... Oh my god, again, again with zombies. Ugh. But it's done so well. I absolutely love this. The, the urgency here is, is just great, and it, you, you capture the 10 second part really, really wonderfully. And this is great. Gardema Jack, I'm a fan. Game is good. It's by Guy Unger with the artist I Can Draw Music by Dave Meister34 and by Sour Jovis. So great job there on Gardema Jack. Pull the Wires, our next game. I gotta blaze through this. Pull the Wires, our next game. Very simple concept, very, very well made. And I, if I had, um, this is my phone, which sucks. If I had a smartphone, I would play this on my smartphone because it's so good. Instructions, click the colored part of wire connected to the C4. So you just press the box, you open it, there's the C4, you see the wire connected and then you pop it up and you get score by how much seconds, it, how much time it took you. And that's it. And this is so well made because you just have to find it. I have no complaints. I mean, it could be a little bit better, but part of the thing is that it overlaps and it's difficult to find it. And it's done so well, and it's just fun. I would totally... Where the... Wrong. I, I don't know, I just... I just had no idea. This is so well made! It's freaking great! I love this. This is good. This is smart. It's perfect. It's the 10 second thing. It does it perfectly. It makes sense with the lore of the game, even though there's barely any lore. It's just such a smart concept. Pull the wire. Joker Den from MR. Good job, man. That's just, that's his name. See, that's his name. That's so good. This is just so smart. I love this. It's so smart. And another thing that's really, really smart is match a number. Match a number is by Amidos2006. Click to continue. Drag the mouse over the numbers. Try to get the same result. Blue is add, red is subtract or minus, and yellow is multiply. This is the greatest thing ever to teach kids how to just do basic math. It's so good. I have to get minus three so I can do... Uh, minus three is, uh, come on, four plus one, I need minus four plus one, and then I leave the mouse, and I got it, and I get a little bit more time. It's not really ten seconds, it's just time constraint, which doesn't really fit the theme of, of Ludum Dare, but who cares? This game is so smart, and I love this. The target is four, two times two is four. Remember that these are, um, multiply one. I can't just press one, and there isn't actually any one. Um... I need 3 minus 2, there you go, 3 minus 2, minus 5 is minus 4 minus 1, 2 is 1 and 1, but I can't go 1 times 2, 5 is 2 and 3, minus 1 is minus 2 minus plus 1, this is just fun and great, 1, 1, I need to, 3 and 3, that's good, 6, um, 2, 2, no, wait, 
No. Uh, there you go. Yes, that way, because it's 2 times 2 plus 2 is equal 6. Minus 4. I can just keep playing this forever, which is really bad, because I shouldn't, because I, I have other things to do. Uh, minus 2 multiply. Anyway, you get the concept. It's really well made. You can obviously go with this to infinity. It was made in 72 hours, so they didn't input too much. You could put up power-ups. You can have a bigger board. You can have more... Mm, though I don't know if division would really work here, but you can have more numbers. Right now you have 1 to 4 and multiply is only 2. It's very basic, but the concept is so smart I had to show this. This is really, really great. Great concept. It's so wonderful to have on, um, if you know, turn it into a full game that would be interesting on, on smartphones and people will play this. I would play this if I had a smartphone. I have a shit phone, remember? Uh, but other than that, I love it. It's really smart. Good job, Amidos 2006. Good job. And our last game of today is another game I have to load up. It's called Hallucinaven, and it's freaking crazy! I can't even explain it. Uh, the point of this is that it's trippy as hell. That's, that's what it is. That's why it looks so trippy, and that's why it allows itself, because I'm saying, you're hallucinating, so it's okay to do crazy shit. And it works! It works really, really well. And we have, uh, lay the egg to a safe place. Not really a proper sentence, but screw that. You move the arrow keys, and that's pretty much all you do. So I'm gonna press enter. And this is me. I'm... I'm this. The art is insane, and I have 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, the egg will automatically pop. And uh, if it makes it good, if it doesn't, I have to restart. Now, if I touch anything, even the ceiling, I'll just go out and, like, pop. And then I'll just... Bleh. Okay, so I'm not supposed to touch anything at all. And I just need to be careful, and the egg will pop after 10 seconds. And, uh, it'll be, it'll be, out and should be fine, you know, pop jumps a little bit, but it's fine. And the cool thing is that after the egg gets to, is, is safe, and that pops up, I don't even care what happens to the actual, um, to the actual bird? I don't know. The bird doesn't matter at all. If the egg survives, that's what important, that's the important part. And the egg will survive no matter what, as long as it's standing in place. Because if it keeps getting hit by things, and there's a lot of things to hit you, obviously it was the first level, now there's things that shoot. If it gets hit by anything, it will keep on moving until it falls off the screen, which is how you lose. But aside of that, it just works. And obviously, now we have things that shoot, and now we have things that move, and later we have things that just try and uh, other stuff. And I, I really need to not get hit by anything, because anything that hits me will just send me flying and the egg? Yeah, the egg made it. See, I'm, I don't even care about me. The egg survived, I'm good, I'm moving on to the next level. It's weird as hell, and the mechanics are weird as hell, and you really have to be careful not to touch anything, but it works, and it's well made, and I haven't played a game, a lander, this is how I call them, a lander game where you have to land, uh, in a very, very, very long time. There was, a, there was a lot of games back in, you know, when I was 13. <laughs> there was a lot of games like this, but now I can just... Pop that, okay, and these blue things will just take me in and kill me immediately, but as long as the egg is safe, I don't care. And it works, and I managed to get all the levels except for the last one. The last one is really difficult. Um, actually, I've, you know what, screw it, I'll just show it. I'll just show the last level, which I have no idea how to finish. I just have no idea how to do that. You have to, you know, everything shoots, and you have to get it right here in the middle, and I just could not do it. It's just, it's so freaking hard. And uh, you have 10 seconds to do it until the egg pops. It's just so impossible to like try and now this shoots and then I'm just like no pop the gets hit no it won't hit by that maybe maybe another yes good no okay hallucinating even hypno hustler you've hypnotized my brain seriously this is crazy shit but it works it's it works and it does the 10 second thing so I'm happy and I wanted to show it because it was cool and I played it to almost completion and I'm gonna try and finish it because I really want to finish this level great concept so we've seen six games all of them from Ludum Dare again Ludum Dare there were tons of games I went through about 20 of them I had a really hard time narrowing it down to a okay level I still got six which is a ton then I usually do like three but I had to, these are so cool, and uh, everybody from Ludum Dare did a really, really great job with this. My name is Coco Stern, I would very much appreciate it if you'd subscribe to this channel, if you like these videos that I make, and I'll be back next Tuesday with another Concept Hunter and more great games, hopefully just one or two or something. And that's it, see you guys next time, thanks for watching.
Bye.